Hi, so in this video, I'm going to talk about some basics of mechanics. Like I'm going to define uh, in a proper way what position vector is, velocity vector is, acceleration is. Uh, now, usually in my channel, I make videos on physics related to college level or university level topics. But this is going to be a very, very basic topic. So if you are an advanced student, so you can skip this video. If you are a young student who are interested in these topics, then you can stay with me. So in mechanics, we are interested in the path of motion of a particle and to describe the path of motion as well as different physical quantities. Uh, some of the basic physical quantities that we use are the position vector, the displacement, the velocity, acceleration, as well as distances and speed. So these are physical quantities that help us gain some idea or an understanding of the nature of motion of the particle of the system of particles. So the most fundamental of these physical quantities is that of the position vector. So let's suppose that there is a particle which is moving or a system of particles which which is moving along a certain trajectory and at a given point in time it is at a particular location where its coordinates are given by x y and z of course to say that it has coordinates x y and z i also need to define a coordinate system right so the most co common coordinate system that we use is the cartesian coordinate frame of reference now of course it is not always but uh, in some other cases you can use some other coordinate frame of reference but most of the time the uh, usual coordinate frame of reference that we default to is the Cartesian coordinate frame of reference which is the rectangular Cartesian rectangular coordinate frame of reference that contains three perpendicular axes x, y and z all originating at some common origin and the, any point in space can simply be signified or pointed towards by looking at the dis, display distances uh, of that particular point along its axis so for example if this is the particular point then the distance of this point along the x-axis is simply given by the x coordinate the distance of this point along the y-axis is simply given by y and the distance of this point along the z-axis is simply given by z right so in this manner x y and z are three numbers in the Cartesian coordinate frame of reference that signify that particular point that this particle has as it moves along its path of motion, the path of motion or the trajectory. Now, if this is how the setup is, then I can define what is known as the position vector of this particular particle at this point in time by drawing a vector from the origin of the coordinate frame of reference to that particular point in space and say that this is represented by r okay so the position vector can then be represented by r that contains the components x i cap plus y j cap and z k cap this is one of the most fundamental physical quantities in mechanics because this is what we are interested in all the problems that we solve fundamentally try to obtain this because this basically gives us an idea about the trajectory because if we have information about this we can obtain all other physical quantities from here on itself now of course uh, r here is not just any number it is dependent on the time period because the particle is moving uh, along some particular path so this is dependent on time so if i define position vector in this manner i can define other physical quantities so for example i can also define displacement so to understand displacement i need to consider the change in the position vector over a certain time period so let me draw this uh, diagram again so as the particle is moving let's suppose that at time t1 the particle is somewhere here and at time t2 the particle reaches somewhere here so at time t1 the particle has position coordinates of x1 y1 and z1 and at time t2 the particle has positions of x2 y2 and z2 in that case i can draw independent position vectors for both these two points in space let's suppose the first is r1 and the second is r2 in this case the displacement vector simply represents the change in the position vector between these two initial and final points given by let's suppose del r so del r simply signifies the change in the position vector over the time period t2 minus t1 which can simply be written as del r is equal to r2 minus r2 
1. So what is R2? R2 is simply x2 i cap plus y2 j cap plus z2 k cap minus x1 i cap minus y1 j cap minus z1 k cap right so now i can simply subtract the individual components along x y and z axis so this can be simply be written as x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap plus z2 minus z1 k cap okay so this can simply be written as let's suppose del x so del x signifies uh, the change in along the uh, distances along uh, along the x-axis and this can be represented as del y so del y simply represents the change along the y-axis and del z so del z can be written as a change along the z-axis so this is what is known as the displacement vector the displacement vector contains the information about the change in the position of the particle all right between the initial and the final points now the displacement vector is a vector quantity so it contains information both about the direction as well as the change in magnitude however this does not tell us about the uh, uh, actual path traveled as you can see del r is a straight line from this point to this point this the actual path traveled might be a little bit different now before i talk about that let's also talk about the next physical quantity which i can deduce from the displacement vector which is known as the velocity okay so the velocity is simply the time rate of change of the displacement vector for an infinite symbol time period what do I mean by infinite symbol time period? It simply means that the del t tends to zero. Therefore, when I say, when we refer to velocity in mechanics, we are usually referred, referring to what is known as instantaneous velocity, unless otherwise mentioned as different. So if it is mentioned that it's average velocity, then of course, we're not talking about instantaneous velocity. But if we mention velocity, just the word velocity, it simply means instantaneous velocity, which is represented by V, and that is nothing but, as I said, the time rate of change of the displacement vector in the limit that del t tends towards zero. So if I write this whole in terms of its components, I can simply say that it is limit del t tending towards zero del x upon del t i cap. And similarly, limit del t tends to zero del y upon del t j cap and limit del t tends to zero del z upon del t k cap now if you have some understanding of calculus when you take the differences of one particular physical quantity with respect to another and take the limit of this particular denominator that this simply signifies or this can be written as the derivative of the first physical quantity with respect to the other quantity so this can simply be written as dx upon dt so this signifies the gradient or the derivative of the curve that you draw between x and t axis right so this is the derivative of x with respect to t i cap plus derivative of y with respect to t j cap and the derivative of z with respect to t k cap so this is in general the velocity vector in terms of its components okay now of course there are other ways of writing this so for example i can also uh, say that uh, this uh, is nothing but the velocity component along the x-axis right this is nothing but the velocity component in the y-axis right and this is nothing but the velocity component in the z-axis so the velocity vector can also be written as these components v is equal to vx i cap plus vy j cap plus vz k cap sometimes since this is a time order derivative this can also be written as x dot i cap plus y dot j cap plus z dot k cap they simply mean the same thing now since this is a velocity it contains magnitude as well as a, a direction right so the magnitude of this kind of a velocity vector can be simply found by saying that the magnitude is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of so vx square plus vy square plus vz square now i'll tell you just in a moment what the magnitude represents but before that let me say that displacement and velocities are vector quantities right now there are other quantities which also contain similar sort of an information but not exactly vector quantities. so what do i mean by that so these are vector quantities 
Vector quantities means that they contain information about direction as well as magnitude. But the displacement is also associated with another quantity which is known as the distance while the velocity is also associated with another quantity which is known as speed which are not vector quantities but rather they are scalar quantities. To understand what distance and speed mean, so let's suppose again that the particle is uh, moving along a certain path, right? Now, if the particle goes from, let's suppose, point, uh, let's suppose, 1 to point, let's suppose, 2 over a time period, then the displacement vector, as I mentioned earlier, is simply the vector drawn from point 1 to point 2, right? So, let's suppose this is del r, 1, 2. Now, this is the displacement vector. How is it different from the distance? The distance is simply the actual path that is traveled. All right. The displacement vector is not the actual path that is traveled. It is simply the vector drawn from the initial to the final point. But the actual path that is traveled is this one. And the, this actual path is what is known as, let's suppose, the distance del s. So, the distance is simply the actual path traveled del s. S. This contains information about the path that has been traveled, but uh, it does not contain information about its direction. So for example, let's suppose that there is a certain particle which travels in a circular manner. It goes from here, it makes one complete journey and it reaches the initial point. In that particular case, the displacement will be starting from here and finishing here. So, it will be zero, but the distance will be the circumference of this circle, right? So, the distance is the actual path traveled, but displacement is directed drawn from initial to final point. Similarly, I can also define speed, all right, or in this case, the, the instantaneous speed as the time rate of change of the distance for an infinite similar time period, let's suppose delta t tends to 0. So, sorry, this is not a vector quantity. So, the speed v is simply ds upon dt. So, the time rate of change of distance with respect to time period, all right. Now, how is the speed related to velocity? So, the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity is equal to the speed. So, I can simply say that what is the magnitude of instantaneous velocity? The sum of the squares of the components vx square plus vi square plus vz square square root over is simply equal to the magnitude of the velocity which by here I mean is nothing but the speed. Okay, This is how we can relate the instantaneous speed to the instantaneous velocity. Now, there is one final physical quantity which is very very important that is known as the acceleration. Again, acceleration is defined as the time rate of change of the velocity for a very small time period. Again, by small time period, I mean that the delta t tends towards 0. So, I can simply say that the acceleration is A can be defined as the time rate of change of velocity where the time period tends towards 0. Again, in terms of its components, this can be written simply as the limit del tending towards 0 del vx, which is a change in velocity along the x-axis with respect to t i cap plus similarly limit del t tends to 0 del vy by del t j cap plus limit del t tends to 0 del vz upon del t k cap. Again, using the ideas of calculus, the limit of one physical quantity with respect to another can be written as the gradient that is the dvx upon dt i cap plus dvy upon dt j cap plus dvz upon dt k cap. So, the acceleration is quite simply these particular quantities. So, the acceleration, so here dvx by dt is nothing but the acceleration component along the x-axis, dvy upon dt is nothing but the acceleration component in the y-axis and dvz upon dt is nothing but the acceleration component in the z-axis. However, what is velocity? Velocity is the time rate of change of the position, right? So, you must remember that vx was nothing but dx upon dt, right? So, therefore, dvx is simply dvx upon dt is nothing but the second order time derivative of uh, x. In that similar fashion, these simply represent that the acceleration is nothing but the first component, the x component is nothing but d2x upon dt2i cap plus d2y upon dt2j cap plus d2z upon dt2 k cap. So, this is the, the acceleration of the particle at any given point in time t 
uh, along the path of motion of the particle so in general a is simply d2r where r is a position vector upon dt2 so the acceleration or the instantaneous acceleration in this case is defined as the second order time rate of change of the this position vector so again revising the whole concept these are some of the basic physical quantities in mechanics so the position vector is the vector drawn from the origin to that particular point in space where the particle is present at that point in time along its path of motion is written in this particular fashion and when we look at the change in the position vector it is basically given by the displacement vector all right that can be written in this particular manner the velocity or the instantaneous velocity in this case is the time rate of change of the displacement vector when we are looking at delta t tending towards zero that can be written in this particular fashion all right displacement and velocity are different from distance and speed in the sense that distance and speed are scalar quantities while these two are vector quantities so when the particle is moving along a certain path the displacement is the vector drawn from the initial to the final point while the distance is the actual path which is traveled and the time rate of change of the actual path which is traveled is on a speed and speed is related to velocity in the sense that the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity is equal to the instantaneous speed now the acceleration again is the time rate of change of the velocity for an extremely small time period where delta t is tending to zero so that is simply nothing but a second order time derivative of the position vector so these are uh, the some of the most basic uh, physical quantities which are used to give us an idea about the nature of motion of a particular system of particles and this is how these are defined which is the position vector the displacement vector the velocity vector acceleration so using this we can solve different kinds of problems in kinematics and mechanics so that's it for today thank you very much